we sure appreciate you letting us hike around and wander around here. So. Yeah, just if you see any gate closes. Welcome back to another episode of Cactus Quest. I am your host, Hunter, and in today's episode, I am on the desert floor yet again. And I'm looking at uh, a very specialized cactus. I'm in central New Mexico right now. And uh, this is kind of an exciting cactus. So typically, it's a very difficult cactus to find in its native environment. And I'm gonna show you why. Take a look at this. So we're looking at kind of a, a grassland, open plain uh, habitat here. And you got a couple of cactus right here in frame right now. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, is it, is it that Apuntia right there? No, no it's not. What we're looking at is actually this guy right here. Do you see it? No, you still don't see it? There it is. That's the Gamma Grass Cactus, better known as Sclerocactus or Tumea papyracanthus. Papyracanthus uh, kind of is a reference, if I'm not mistaken, to the spines. So the spine morphology on this, as you can tell, is um, helps it to really blend in here with its environment. So this is a uh, adaptation that has helped this cactus to really thrive uh, in this very specialized environment. And I mean, this might not be the typical type of environment that you would expect to see a cactus in because you see what I'm looking at here. You've got uh, open grasslands, you've got the apuntias, you've got the cylindro apuntias, there's some mesquite. Um, you've got some, some uh, creosote here. This is actually a really northern, northern extension, the northernmost extension of, uh, of creosote. And uh, it's kind of interesting, I'll show them to you. They're a little bit smaller and a little bit more compact compared to some of the uh, creosote growing out in the Mojave Desert near me. Behind it, you gotta be very careful because of how much they blend in. You know, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna crush them. So you've got the Apuntia here, and then let's take a little gander. And there you go. You have another Tumea right there. And if you notice, pretty cool, we missed the flower, but you've got, the, the plants are currently in fruit. And uh, the fruit, I don't know much about how these things, uh, they're fruiting process but those fruit don't look like they're quite ready if this was my greenhouse i wouldn't be picking them yet i don't think saying oh, about the, the oh a seedling oh, oh two seedlings guys, yeah. oh, babies. Wow. oh that is so cool and you'll notice the ants here yeah they will actually start to get onto the fruit and they will eat the pulp and in a lot of cases, they will take the seeds back to their nest. That is so cool. That's actually one of the main uh, uh, vectors for seed distribution is the ants. Wow, I love seeing seedlings. So the ants those are Those are new. We did not notice those the last time we were here, actually. Ooh. You can see how they blend in, but yeah, these are these are quite young seedlings, maybe from two different years or could be the same year, but you can see they start to develop that little grassy spine at a very early age. So how would you, I mean, if you were to estimate age of these plants, this the, the larger, the parent plant here? This guy here, uh, easily 10 years, easily. It's a very dry environment, uh, very cold in the winter time, and they only have a short window of time that they grow. They go into a summer dormant period uh, for the most part when things kind of start to dry out. We've had some recent rains here that has actually been quite beneficial for these guys. They've really pumped up quite a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you can tell by the number of fruits on top that they went through a very prolific flowering uh, period this year. They had some winter moisture down here which is quite beneficial to these plants. They can have snow uh, down here somewhat frequently and the plants could be uh, conceivably buried in snow and as that snow melts uh, as you know temperatures get warmer that is a uh, very critical water source to get these guys to wake up and flower in the spring. 
Oh, look, 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 look. Oh yeah, those two, I forgot about those guys. They, those were part of the ones that are in this group. You have two plants oh, whoa. right here oh. that are extremely well camouflaged. I didn't even notice the second one. And these are, these really exemplify just how camouflaged and difficult these guys are to find. If they did not have those fruits on them, I wouldn't have they would them. disappear into the uh, disappear into the landscape. And in fact, here's another one that oh, I yeah. had not seen before. So you've got kind of a juvenile plant down here. Yeah. Every time I've come to this habitat, I've found new plants that I hadn't seen on previous trips. So that just goes to show you too, you know, when you come into places like this where you've got small plants that are growing and very, very well camouflaged in the environment, you got to be really, really careful where you step and, and really kind of move slowly through the environment because you don't look, look, look. Oh yeah. You don't want to crush them, right? Once you see one, uh, what you want to do is kind of stop and scan in a kind of a radius of, oh, 10 to 20 feet around it. They are somewhat colonial because the seed does not get carried long distances away. So thus you see we have several individuals in this kind of close quarters here. And, and you can kind of see, I mean, I've got my knees in a, in a sandy spot where I'm trying to step in the same places over and over again because anytime that if you're just blindly stepping around on the grass, then you could very, very easily just be oh, crushing yeah. seedlings. And the seedlings are small, you know, and... and they occur, uh, this, this is a real deep, kind of a fine, sandy loam here. The plants themselves, the, a plant like this in particular, there'll be an equal distance of plant root below the surface. They have a quite a long tap root okay, uh, that goes deep in the soil. They don't have a like a say a ferro cactus or something that has a you know a very woolly spreading root right. system these guys have a deep deep tap root i wonder if does the deep tap root must serve them in the environment you were saying that this area gets very limited rainfall seven yes. you know, about seven inches per year so then that must allow them to tap in and get closer down. Ooh, look at that. Does that have offsets? Uh, that one probably got chewed by a cow and has has branched off. Anywhere above the soil level, uh, most of the time the plant will survive that damage. And like with many things, once that meristem, the growing meristem of the cactus gets damaged in an effort to continue to grow, oftentimes what'll happen is it'll go into overdrive and you'll develop a new growing meristem and the plant will become a multi-headed plant, even where typically it would be a solitary growing plant. And these are very, very solitary plants. Um, so the point you made is, is quite correct. You rarely see plants with more than one meristem unless they've been damaged. And what is your, in terms of the taxonomy on these guys, you, do you like Tumea or? I'm an old school guy, Sclero. so Tumea has been what I kind of have known the plants from At my time in the hobby. Current taxonomy is Sclerocactus papyricanthus. Okay. Sclerocactus. They are they are closer to scleros than they were pedios. They were known as pedio papyricantha uh, quite a long time ago. You'll okay. see, you know, you look through some of the really old time cactus publications, and you'll see varying taxonomy on this plant. Howdy. All right, we're uh, we got a rancher running up on us. I'm gonna cut the camera for now. They're from Tucson just about a month ago, so. I get up. So what Rob was just telling me is that the uh, the seed on these tomato papyricantha, um, they're, they're able to play the longevity game. So they can sit dormant in the soil, ready, waiting for the right conditions to germinate for years and years and years, which is actually quite interesting. And if you notice right here at the base of this guy, you see this there, right there, my finger's touching? It's real small, but you can see it in there. There's a little seedling. So that actually shows you how the seed will fall out of the fruits once they dry and open. And the seed will just kind of trickle down to the side and germinate there. And uh, recently, I read it, I don't remember what the plant was, but 
Some scientists, uh, I believe in Israel, were able to germinate like a 2,000 year old seed. So um, it, it does not surprise me that these, uh, these little specialized cryptic cacti are able to, to do the same similar kind of thing here. It must obviously serve them very well. So also grown at the spot, hanging out with the two maize, you've got one of the uh, plants that I'll see hiking around the Mojave Desert, which is uh, Corifantha vivipara, getting ready to getting ready to bloom. Uh, no doubt a side effect of the, uh, the intense rains that uh, the area has gotten as of late. Would have been lovely to see those in flower. I would have loved to show those to you guys. I know, I know, I know how you love it. I know you guys like the bloomage. Oh, look at this, you guys. What did I find? What did I find? It's just piles of top dressing. Look at that. Look familiar? I stood up, turning around, and, uh... Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, look at this big one. Oh, I didn't even see that one. So I, I spotted this guy here, and then as I was squatting down to take a look at him, Rob said, hey, look at that guy. So that just goes to show you the, the true cryptic nature of these cactus is they really, really blend in. I mean, look at, look at that. Look at, where is it now, right? I mean, it's, you're looking basically, you're, it's pattern recognition and what we're looking for is grass with girth. Get a, <laughs> get a shot from about eye level looking straight down and you'll get an idea just how, yeah. how blending in they make. So the plant is right there, right? Right there. And the other one is right there incredible look at that little guy how you doing cutie how you doing little fella huh got a horned lizard a little baby one a little chubby fella oh, that's a round tail horned lizard a round tailed horned lizard look at that little guy he's a little grumpy he's not too happy that i picked him up he said, why'd you do this to me, Hunter? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set you back down. And you go. Feel free to go now. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bye bye. Off into the desert you go, my friend. Go, go home. <laughs> Lead us to the Tumea, my friend. Thanks for hanging. Have a good one. <laughs>